Hey guys, it's time to talk about historical fiction. Now, you see, I've got my little avatar that looks like... That's right. I hope that you'll enjoy today. We're going to talk about author's purpose as well as historical fiction. So, you take a minute and think about what are the different purposes that authors have for writing. Alright, hopefully you realize that there are three main purposes for an author to write something. One, they want to inform. Two, they want to entertain. Or three, they want to persuade you to do something. Now your teachers may have gone into some different detail, but there are those three basic reasons uh, for an author to write something uh, will exist. So if you have some questions or you've talked about something different in class, just uh, go over with your teacher as to what umbrella that some of their um, ideas might have gone unto, under. Now, that being said, we're going to talk about historical fiction today. Now I have a quick video from The Lion King that um, will talk about the author's purpose and I think it does a really good job. So uh, without further ado, let's look at The Lion King. So what is Rafiki trying to tell us? We can either do what or what when it comes to the past. And that's what historical fiction authors are getting at. Sometimes they want to inform us. They just want to tell us about the past. Sometimes they want to persuade us to make sure that what happened in the past does not happen again. And finally, sometimes they want to entertain you. Sometimes it's fun just to learn about the past and just to hear the stories. Stories are awesome, especially when you get to learn about new cultures. And so historical fiction authors, sometimes their purpose could be many things. Now, what makes a historical fiction novel historical fiction versus realistic? And basically, what you do is historical fiction either has to do with a historical event or a historical person. So for example, um, Abraham Lincoln. If there is a historical fiction, or if there's a fictional book about him, then it's going to be historical fiction because he is a historical figure. Um, for example, too, uh, Titanic. Has anybody seen that movie, Titanic? There's actually a book that goes along with it, and that tells about a certain time period and a certain event in history, but they've kind of had fun with the details. And so that's what makes it historical fiction. The, the facts, there are some facts, there are some historically accurate facts, but they don't stick to them. Um, the main character Rose in Titanic um, may or may not have existed. There, there was a young lady very similar to Rose, but the story that went along with it and her falling in love with the poor boy, blah, 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 that story, they don't know. It's possible it could have happened, but they don't know that it happened, and so that's what makes it fictional. But it's historical fiction because it happened on the Titanic. Do you see what I'm talking about? So, I'm going to introduce you to a few historical fiction novels now, and I hope you'll find one that you really, really like. So, let me tell you about a few books that I have in mind that I would like for you to uh, think about reading. We're going to start off first with one called uh, The Watsons Go to Birmingham. One of my very favorite books. It's about the civil rights movement. Fantastic. <clears throat> and then we're going to go to Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, which actually happened much earlier, but still had to do with the civil rights. What you have to remember is sometimes reading historical fiction is not always easy, but it's great. Then, A Break with Charity, which has, happens to do with the Salem Witch Trials. Behind the Bedroom Wall, which is World War II, which is what you're reading in class right now with Number of the Stars. Gabriel's Horses, which is during the Civil War, and a boy named Gabriel and his horse. 
the invention of Hugo Cabret. It is a humongously large book, but I cannot tell you um, how great it is. I actually read it very fast because there's so many pictures, and it has to do with a historical figure. That's why it's historical fiction. And the last book that I'm going to show you is called The Wednesday Wars. Now, when you see the cover in a minute, you're going to think, is she crazy? That looks about as interesting as watching the paint dry on the wall. But it's about the Vietnam War, and it's about a young man, and he is wonderful. The character is great. The writing is superb, and it is, by and large, one of the best stories that I've read in a long time. It tells you about the um, Vietnam War, but it doesn't hit you over the head with it, and so I highly recommend it. Now, you're going to look at the, the pictures of the covers in just a second, but I want to tell you a couple more things. One, we have a historical fiction section, um, so you'll go to, uh, you can go to that section and pick something out, or we have a war section, and almost every book that's in that war section would also fit in the historical fiction um, assignment that your teacher has given you. So if you like war books, go straight to the war section. It's at the very end of the fiction, and you can find something really cool there, or go to the historical fiction, or and this is what I really recommend, go to iBistro and type in something that you are interested in in history and see if we have a historical fiction book that, that matches that. If not, you know, we can always get something from another school, and we are more than happy to do that. So, have fun reading, look at these titles, and find a good historical fiction book.